All right, let's get started. Quick reminders, as you probably know, there's no school on Monday. And then what you're gonna be doing tomorrow is actually preparing for the civil rights quiz that we're having on Tuesday. I didn't start out teaching. I didn't start teaching until I was in my 30s. The Little Rock Nine, do you remember what the Little Rock Nine did? I started off as a banker and I did not enjoy that at all. So when I decided to change careers, I thought, well, I'll try teaching. And uh, I've loved teaching. Out in Abilene, Texas, school teacher Jay Moore will be the first to admit that as in any history class, it's always been a challenge to find a way to engage his students, to ignite an interest in the past. But truth be told, Mr. Moore has found a way to engage his high school audience, and it's simple. Jay is a storyteller, painting mental portraits of historic events in a style that's proven effective for so many years. In fact, Jay's passion for the past has made him a standing room only sensation. When I grew up, my grandparents had a big influence on me. My grandmother loved to tell stories. My grandfather, on my dad's side, he liked to drive around and look at stuff and say what was, was there, what this used to be. So I think I grew up with kind of a curiosity about my own hometown. Well, thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Paramount. My name is Jay Moore, and I uh, say happy That just really surprised me. The interest level really surprised me. I never thought that, you know, that many people would show up to the Paramount Theater to hear local history. I, I was thinking 300. I never thought it was gonna be, you know, a thousand people sitting out there. So that kind of surprised me. It was like coming into a brand new and different world. It's one of the most historic show places in all the Southwest, the Paramount Theater in downtown Abilene. And when Jay Moore's on stage, it's filled to capacity. After hundreds of hours of research, Jay finds those little-known bits and pieces of our past long covered up by the parade of decades. And somewhere along the way, a history lecture becomes center stage entertainment. When it comes to newsworthy animal headlines, uh, it's hard to beat. Squirrel jumps on passerby, sends him to hospital. <laughs> Something else we would probably like to forget would be hat day at the fair. Um, <laughs> It started making me think, if I could tell those stories, I think I could help build community. Still embedded in the curb are several iron rings which you can tie your horse to. And there are so many things in your hometown that you pass by every day in your car that are meaningless until someone explains to you what the background of that is, how it came to be, who that person is. Plenty Wingo ran the coffee shop in the basement hotel on Chestnut when he decided that the thing to do was to walk around the world backwards. He averaged somewhere between 24 and 30 miles a day. So it was full speed astern to Chicago where a newsreel crew caught up with him. He had reached New York by November of 1931. It was at that point that Mrs. Wingo did some backing up of her own as she filed for a divorce. <laughs> While Plenty L. Wingo was stepping off the miles in reverse, a heart balm trial was playing out at the courthouse. Now heart balm is a term you don't hear much anymore. It refers to a jilted fiance who is suing for breach of promise, and thus she is seeking a balm for her broken heart. And that was the case for this lovely local last 21-year-old Madge Roberts, who brought suit against the dark-haired Louis Keel, claiming that the dashing Louis had caused her mental distress and loss of weight. Madge was under the very distinct impression that she was his betrothed. So, when word first reached Madge that Louis had married this girl, well, the news sent Madge straight to bed and then to the hospital. She claimed that she was despondent, nervous, and irritable. <laughs> the Madge Roberts story was like a soap opera. There was absolutely nothing around here like it. It had to be the trial of the decade in Abilene in the 1930s. But some stories are incredibly moving. No one knew, uh, not those men, not their loved ones, just how long it would be before they would return back to Abilene. And absolutely no one dreamed of what was to come. There are a few things in our history that are as emotional as the story of the Lost Battalion. So to the U.S. military, they were lost. And so they were lost to their families back here in Abilene. It's stories like the West Texas Boys from the Lost Battalion of World War II that Jay brings into clear focus, reminding people there really is no such thing as ancient history.
And they would be known then, and they are still known now, as the Lost Battalion. And maybe you're like me. And every time that you drive back across this grassy plain, and you too look for that dream on the horizon. Thank y'all for coming, and good night. I guess when I'm at the Paramount and I'm up there and it's all finished, uh, more than anything, I guess I wish that my grandparents, my mother's mother, my dad's dad, could be there to see how they impacted my life to tell history. I think they leave that room feeling as if the people that they're rubbing elbows with, they're Abilenians. That's what we have in common. Thank you. We don't all know each other, but we have a common collective past, and it helps define who we are out here. Jay Moore says it's not just Abilene people who are hungry for their own history. It's a universal desire we all have. Whether it's a sellout crowd or a classroom, we know a man whose passion for the past is making that connection for so many people. Teaching is a very satisfying job. And so, um, <clears throat> I think it may, uh, as you can tell, it kind of makes me emotional. It's, it's, it, it makes me feel like I've added to someone's life in a small way. <laughs>